episode 14 of The Witching Hour. I am Perry Nemroff, and today my co-host Haley Fouch is rocking an awesome Goosebumps shirt that I am insanely jealous of. Yes, this is <laughs> this is our last episode with my Halloween themed clothes. Uh, I'm a little sad. Yeah, but the witching hour is year round. Yeah, well, I'm pretty be sure. Clothes, yeah, clothes, but Halloween. I just wanted to make sure. If it sounds like uh, I'm dying inside a little right now, it's because I am exhausted from having gone to Halloween Horror Nights last night Yay. and staying out too late and drinking too much. It's a good reason. It was. Yeah, it was a good reason. Um, it was a lot of fun, too. I was pretty impressed by most of the mazes there. I think my favorite one was probably that Universal uh, Monsters one. Oh, they didn't have that in really? Orlando, so I, I'm i glad to hear that it's a standout over here. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one. Uh, I also, for the first time ever, so every single time I've gone to Halloween Horror Nights, my focus is always on the mazes, and there's always that Jabberwockies dance performance thing, oh, and sure. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and we actually did it this time, and it was kind of cool, and Mario Lopez was in, in oh. the audience, and they brought him up, and they did a little, like, uh, miming type performance with him. Sure, why it's not? It's pretty entertaining. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, fun fact, too, that I learned last night. So, I went to Halloween Horror Nights with uh, Lonnie, my sister, yes. and her husband, Matt, and I discovered that Lonnie is essentially the female version of Makuga. Oh, no. Why? Oh, the screaming. She screamed the entire <laughs> time we were... I've never heard anything like it in my life. That's amazing. It's like, you know when you go through the mazes and you're all, like, scrunched together? So you'll walk through a, a scare moment and, you know, someone will pop out and there'll be some sort of musical stinger that's paired yes. with it. Then you'll walk away, but you'll hear that stinger again behind you for the next... It, it didn't matter. Like, when it would happen for the people behind us, she would scream and she would, wow. like... To, like go into like a ball and she had all these weird positions <laughs> but she still likes to go to this stuff it, isn't it incredible yeah. I, just, I never realized that she was like that in haunted houses wow. but the first one we went through it was that it was the halloween four maze and i was first lonnie was in the middle matt was uh bringing up the rear and she she like used me as a shield <laughs> like, i'll never trust lonnie now if we're ever in a for? heart because her knee-jerk reaction is to grab me and put me in front <laughs> of the thing with a knife <laughs> but that's great you know how um especially during this time of year when it gets super busy there everybody there's just so many people in each maze you're essentially just walking in a straight line there's never any room to breathe in front of you <laughs> there was a point in the halloween maze where there there was like a significant amount of space because lonnie kept oh. pulling me back and wouldn't let me walk forward i really i'm i'm just dumbfounded i've never seen anything like that in my life that's great i mean i guess you can't control always how you respond in those mazes like if i actually the rare times that it does happen if i get scared i laugh a lot like if somebody really gets me yeah i burst into laughter which i think is probably fairly annoying <laughs> but it's just my reaction yeah it's As, interesting to see everybody's yeah. different reactions you get primal I, I just learned what what hers was and <laughs> apparently it is constantly screaming and then doing like these weird like crouch down oh. to the the floor type positions <laughs> i'm just i can't stop picturing it so she's not gonna last long in the memoir <laughs> slasher movie no, okay. no, I'm pretty convinced that after last night, she's going to be the first. The first she's to go. either going to be the first to go or I might be the first to go because <laughs> she's going to push me into whatever the bad thing is. Well, shit. <gasps> yeah, uh, that was an experience that I'm glad I had. And I think I was doing the uh, the laughter thing in one of the mazes because the first time I saw her do that, I was I was like doubled over laughing. Yeah. I just I couldn't believe what was happening. That's I'm, I don't blame you. That's some fun things to learn about your sister when yeah. you're both in your 30s, right? Yeah. 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 Almost. She, she's right on the cusp there. Oh, OK. <laughs> it was uh, it was an experience that I'm glad I had, especially because Halloween is right around the corner. Yeah. And now we are one step closer to our John Carpenter show. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to go see him perform. I'm very excited. As am I. But in the Halloween spirit, while we are talking all things spooky, we wanted to have an episode that I think is about one of our mutual favorite spooky things, yeah. and it's an episode about witches. Yay. Specifically about, I was about to say, the chilling adventures of Sabrina, but no, oh, it's, it's it is just chilling, chilling adventures of Sabrina. Yeah. But it's like, you need to put the the in the sentence when you're making a sentence, no? Or am I, I not allowed to do that even? I never would have even thought about it except learning that ne like Netflix was really particular about it. But yes, uh, 
I don't know if it would be in a sentence, the chilling adventure. I think I it's don't know. still just I still the title. Natu- but I naturally want yeah. to say it. All right. We're going to talk about chilling adventures of Sabrina. And then we're also going to give you a non-spoiler review of Suspiria. Luca Guadagnino's Suspiria yes. remake. It's a very, very witchy witching hour indeed. That it is. Uh, and I'm excited to jump right into it. Now with Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, we are going to talk about the first two episodes because that's all I have seen so far. So basically consider this your spoiler warning for the first yeah. two episodes. That's as far as we're going to go. Nothing after that is going to be discussed. So you're in the clear if you have not watched the entire show. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll circle back and do a little spoiler heavy discussion down the line. But right now, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Haley, what are your initial thoughts? It is good. It's not the show I was expecting. I was expecting it to be good, but it's very much a uh, CW teen drama despite Mm -hmm. being on Netflix and I I guess when it moved to Netflix I had assumed that it would be slightly less in that mold but um, no it's it's a straight up soapy teen drama that just happens to be witchy as hell and I I love the aesthetic of the show is fantastic phenomenal the set decorations and costumes Mm -hmm. do you like the way it's shot no. Okay. I, I was wondering nuts. I was wondering if I was the only one. No, that blurry thing. Yeah. Like, oh. Well, it's it also seems like uh, I've been paying a lot of attention to it because that's obviously one of the very first things that caught my eye and it seems like it's not in every single frame. No. Sometimes it bleeds in too much. Sometimes it's not there at all and I just found myself getting a little distracted by tracking that specifically. I find it very distracting and I'm sure there's an intent and purpose behind it and uh, having only watched it once and not really revisited my like read is that maybe it happens more when things are the most magical yeah i mean that's i think that was the first time that i really picked up on it i forgot specifically what was happening in episode one maybe a vision or something but that's when it really kicked in but was it the weird sisters when they show up? Well, the fun, the funny other thing is the the weird sisters when they show up, I believe it's in episode two. I oh, got okay. I, I went like on a on a path thinking about the the blurry effect. Yeah. And I started to think about how sad it was for the third uh spooky sister. <laughs> because where she is in the frame, she gets oh, blurred out. Not. So it's like I want like I really I genuinely caught myself thinking. I wonder if on, on set she's like, Oh, like we're a trio. I'm like front and center in frame right now. And then I watched no. the episode and I'm just like a, bur- a blurry blob. I mean, I think that happens to a lot of actors in a lot of scenes throughout the whole season. There are actors that are straight up just like they've come out of the ring and their photograph isn't mm. good anymore. It's That's a distraction for me and I don't okay. care for it. I have another weird distraction that I don't... I know I'm not alone because yeah. I saw... I've like searched the hashtags on Twitter. The makeup in the show is really <gasps> heavy. Weird. It's heavy. heavy and dark. Oh my and... God, I thought I was the only... Only no. one. I thought I thought I was the only one, and you know who it's the worst on? I think Lucy Davis. Yes, it is. Holy shit! Sometimes on Harvey too. I'm like, why oh is my. your face all yellow? Young I'm man? really, I'm really surprised because normally, like these aren't like I don't care about fashion surprise, right. surprise or makeup. So normally these kinds of things just go over my head, and I don't care. But that was the first thing I thought <laughs> when I saw her. I'm like, your complexion does not look like that. You do not need a, like skin caked with foundation no, and none of that. I Eyeshadow is blended. It's a very strange look for the show. Um, that maybe when we, if we come back for spoilers, yeah. I have some thoughts on especially Sabrina's makeup transformation over the season because I do like okay. fashion and makeup and all the girly stuff. But um, yeah, that was weirdly something that distracted me just as much as the blurry huh. screens. And um, I, I, I don't know why, because that show has a lot of money. Why that would happen? But anyway, uh, other than those two things, it's a beautiful looking show. It is. It and, is. Uh, it, it's, as you said right before we started, on the nose. Oh, that it is. Yes. So I'm I'm a bit of a mixed positive on it. Yeah. Like, I enjoy a lot of things about it. I love this kind of witchy, demonic, uh, you know, very Buffy based type of teen storytelling, mm-hmm. teen horror drama. And yet there are certain technical elements and maybe some of the uh, more teen soap opera elements that pull me out a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm pretty much actually right on the same uh, on the same level as you on this one. 
I'm definitely enjoying it, and I think my favorite thing is probably just the uh, the organization and the structure of the coven that she's going to join and all the rules that she has to follow. I like seeing, you know, every little bit of information they drop along the way in order to figure out, you know, what world is she really playing in. Yes. What does tend to lose me is the CW element of it, and I think the the worst offender here, and to no fault of Ross Lynch, the actor who plays him, is Harvey. Every yeah. single time I see the two of them together, it's like they've got fucking halos over their heads, and it's a perfect dream relationship. Yeah. And, you know, other than the fact that H- Harvey is, like, a cute, kind guy, after two episodes, I still don't quite understand why she's so drawn to him. Like, she has some interesting uh, personality quirks that I really like, and I think that's why I'm being sucked into the series as much as I am. I, I just love how outspoken and how strong she is, and, you know, if she if she believes in something, she's going to go for it. And I yes. just like the way that, you know, she doesn't only command the screen, but commands every single room she's in, and, in within the show. And he's just, you know, he's just kind of, like, nudging her along with, like, positive little uh, lines of dialogue and, and being kind and, and I mean, mushy. I mean, all really good things and I, I like a representation of a healthy, positive relationship Yeah. but also he's very boring. He isn't, And yeah. I just, I don't know what to when you, like you're saying, when you have a character like Sabrina who's so strong and like he is so vanilla and mm-hmm. empty kind of I don't know maybe if they gave us more about him from the get-go or a reason to care yeah. about their relationship I think it just comes in having an understanding of of why she's drawn to him and I I don't believe that she's the kind of character who would simply be drawn to someone because they are a nice guy right like he's got something else to him like especially because of all the things that we see her fight for, even in just the two episodes that I've seen, whether you're talking about the stuff she deals with signing the book and the coven or the stuff she's dealing with at school, she is someone who is going to stand on her own two feet and fight for whatever she believes and uh, believes is right. And it doesn't seem like that kind of person is going to gel as well or be super attractive to someone who's just like kind of like bland and as you said dull and very passive yeah very very passive and even even in the scenes where he is pushing to you know have her join him during their halloween plans and telling her she loved he loves her and all that kind of stuff it never really feels like there's any kind of like fight there no if that makes sense i don't know i think it starts too much that they're so in love immediately and we don't have any reason to understand why or care and i Mm -hmm. think that is actually a pretty big structural problem in the show because as it is in the first two episodes that relationship continues to really be a driving force and arguably more and more as the show goes Mm -hmm. on and so that's like if I'm not invested you've lost a huge amount of the drama in your show from day one yeah yeah no that that's a little bit of a bummer and you know again I'm two episodes in I know you've watched a little more yeah. the other thing sticking with the the human realm of uh, Sabrina is I want I want a little more out of her two friends also uh-huh. I want I want even more out of them like I see what I they're think you'll get that I see what they're doing with them but right now they're they feel like they're being used to further a certain agenda a certain storyline and i want to feel it more from their perspective even though it's sabrina's show i will say i think it gets successful Good. we see more of them and they get more interesting plot lines that are a little less uh generic teen tv yeah although i love you know like this they're doing a great job with um gender neutral representation mm-hmm. or uh you know non-binary and you know how that is in school when you're a teenager and really intense pretty intense depictions of bullying more so very intense yeah it, it really it caught me off guard at first right especially because you know even in this conversation jumping from the bland relationship with harvey to something that not many shows have the nerve to tap into quite like the show is doing only two episodes in yeah like they really just go for it they right do. off the bat I think they know their audience. They're not they're not going for people who are going to have a problem with this. They're yeah. going for the younger generation who's like, "Yeah, we we're done. We like we accept non-binary exactly. genders and things like that." Yeah, I I um, definitely find that that quality really interesting and I think that's probably one of the main things that beyond the main storyline here that I'm looking forward to seeing progress. Yeah, there are some small touches later in the season that I found really nice pertaining to that particular storyline. I uh I want to touch on the fact 
that this show is so satanic because <laughs> having not read the source material, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, yeah. only being familiar with, you know, the previous generation, Sabrina the Teenage Witch comics. Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh-huh. And like, I'm not Christian, so it's, I'm not offended or anything, but I was just surprised that that was allowed, kind of. And like, um, I don't know, it seems like something's going to piss off a huge percentage of the population. Yeah. Like, yeah, man, Christians are not chill with Satanism. <laughs> I guess so. I don't um, know. I think I've just kind of like boxed my mind into, you know, this is a fake show about witches. Totally. <laughs> I, I just, well, that's never, no offense to any listeners, but that's never been the strong sur- suit of conservative Christians is to go, well, this is mm-hmm. fiction. Let's just let it do its thing. You know, that's not how the moral majority was born or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I think I'm just kind of boxed into my own thinking. Right. I don't, I was a little shocked and impressed that they went that far with it. Also, as um, somebody who I- invests somewhat in like um, unusual faiths and things like that, I'm not sure I, l- I love witchcraft inherently being associated with demonic and satanic mm-hmm. things because if they were just doing that kind of witchcraft, I wouldn't take issue with it. But because, like, the name of their group at school is called Wicca, yeah. and, like, Wicca is not Satanism, and she's a satanic witch, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just a little miffed about that confusion and not really clarifying that. But that's just because I have a lot of friends who huh. are Wicca, and I don't want their faith to be misrepresented, you know? Did you have this feeling about the, the incorporation of the satanic elements two episodes in, or is there is there more to it that might be a little, I, I don't know if it's off-putting or unjustified, stuff like that. I don't think any of it's off-putting or unjustified. I think it's just shocking. Yeah. For one, shocking that it was approved on like net- well. Netflix. And then, um, yeah, just the, the mainly calling it Wicca. I was like, oh, that's not right. That's mm-hmm. not what Wicca is. Okay. Like, I mean, I know that's not what their group is. Their group is to support yeah, women, yeah. which is what Wicca is. But the fact is Sabrina is a satanic witch. Mm-hmm. And yes, the the Satanism remains and gets very dark at really? times. Yes. Okay. Maybe it's just because I've only scratched the surface of it, but it actually I, I don't know. I, I think I just found it found it interesting, one, because I'm not familiar with the source material and, mm. and two, because I've never really seen anything specifically like this. And yeah. I think that statement also applies to the show overall. I mean, I know we're busy comparing it to like CW, you know, young adult romance type thing. Right. But Overall, just the way, you know, the show looks, the way it approaches certain topics that other shows don't dare touch, the way it's incorporating the witchcraft with the Satanism, there's all these things swirling around that it's like, I think the best way I would describe it is, is like, I think I feel balanced and like I have my footing and then all of a sudden it'll completely knock me off course. There's certain yeah. things that I think give me like a firm understanding of what I'm into right now, especially with all the Riverdale comparisons too. I'm sure. not caught up on that show by any means, but uh-huh. I've seen enough and I feel like that gave me a little bit of a foundation. And then this show is kind of purposely shaking everything up very often. And I find that exciting. And I think that above all else is what's drawing me into the show and what makes me want to keep watching. Yeah, it's a. I agree that it throws you off constantly. This show has a weird ass morality that I haven't wrapped my head around yet. And again, I'd love to talk spoilers when you get to the end. Yeah, yeah. There are some choices at the end. And I'm like, I'm not sure what you're saying right now. Um, Let's write it out and wait for season two, because that's an interesting perspective. Mm-hmm. And throughout the season, there are, like I said, the Satanism stuff gets really dark, and the okay. witches can be... Even in the first well, episode, I was like, I'm not sure that being a witch sounds very cool. Like, is it worth it? I don't know. I will say that after two two episodes... Yeah. It it's a a no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a no for me. It's a firm no, and yeah. you know, again, I don't know the source material. My experience yeah. with Sabrina was with the Melissa Joan Hart show, sure. which is obviously completely different. But in that show, if I if my memory serves me correct right now, and I actually remember that show well enough because it's not like something I revisit by any means, I always looked at the ants as as like a loving system of support and they're both being super kind. And to see uh, Hilda and Zelda so on opposite ends of the spectrum, and I don't even just mean like, oh, one's the good cop, one's the bad cop. I mean like freaking Zelda's mean. She's She's mean. Borderline evil. She 
Like, why is that a thing that just because she's the older sister, she gets to kill her whenever she pisses know. her off? I mean, that I mean, my, my sister pisses me off all the time. But <laughs> that that raised the biggest red, like uh, an off putting red flag to me that yeah. I started to think when that happened, am I ever going to be able to like Zelda? And it feels wrong not to be able to like the main character's aunt. I know. It's a struggle I had all season. And at times I do like her. Often I respect her. She's very badass. Um, but I don't know if I've gotten there. At she this has point. moments of like remarkable dignity when she shouldn't have any that I'm like, okay. okay, go girl. But also she's fairly evil. And that like, again, the morality of this show is very weird, very confusing to me. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, jarred by it uh, yeah. regularly through each episode and like what does that I think jarring might be one of the best words to apply yeah. to this show overall especially when you know i love the way she poses it to harvey because harvey loves superheroes and i feel like yes. because it's such a big deal in our our place of work our industry lives overall if you like entertainment that really put a lot into perspective for me because when you're sitting there, the question becomes, you know, what would you give up to have all of these abilities? And I actually think the show uh, does a very good job justifying both sides of it for Sabrina, where by the time she gets to that point, like, I, I really didn't know what she was going to do. Yeah. Like, I didn't think it was going to be, you know, like a super, you know, clean, oh, she signs the book and just goes off. I knew there was going to be some sort of complication, but I went into that ceremony not entirely knowing what decision she was going to make. And yeah. I think it needed that. No, I do, too. And it's, well, because you talk about that conversation with Harvey, and she only tells him about giving up her whole life. She doesn't even mention that she has to give up her eternal soul, yeah. too. And like, I love the the questions that are raised by that yeah. too, and like, you know, the double meaning of what it is for her in terms of signing Satan's book, but also, you know, essentially anything in the real world that you commit yourself to. Yes, I, I'm taking it a little literally and being like, yes, but like she's signing her soul yeah, to yeah. the devil. <laughs> um, I don't know, and I think that's an interesting problem in this series is that I'm not sure it convinces me, although it has clearly convinced a lot of people, Mm -hmm. that witchcraft is any fun at all. I mean, I guess they get to live long lives and stay young and stuff and have some powers, but man, it seems like a harsh and brutal faith as it's depicted in the show with with very limited reward. There's one point during during her dark baptism, that didn't happen, I guess, that... (laughs) It made me think of that. It's when uh, I believe something is said and then it cuts to a crowd shot where where I think he's telling her, oh, you're going to leave all your, your friends behind. And just at the right moment, it cuts to all of these like, you know, creatures and mean looking people. And the first thing that goes through your mind is just the simplest thought of why do you want to lock yourself into being with these yeah. people when you have these wonderful, cheery, loving friends? Like I'm, I guess it's the promise of near immortality, but you sure and give power. up a lot. And, and is power. It, and, and is it power. worth it? Yeah, I don't know. It's often when I read fantasy, which I, you know, I spent a lot of my life doing. I would think, yes, the sacrifices required by magic in this story are worth it. In this mm-hmm. particular case, I'm like, oh boy, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, other than the fact that I really like Salem and I would like to continue yes. living, and I, I wanted a little more of that. Like, what 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 is the thing called that that bonds with the the cat that she calls for in the woods? A goblin. Uh, is, is that a what familiar, it is? A goblin. A familiar. Yeah. A familiar. That's the term but that I was a looking goblin. for in the animal i wanted to see a little more of it in its in its, in its natural state yeah. before it turned in like it just had this really i mean cute seems like the wrong word but it like popped out of the corner yeah. it's like <laughs> hey i heard you call so i came <laughs> i just wanted to have a little more of a conversation there yeah i like salem but uh i'll always miss sassy salem oh yeah i mean that's a real blow Okay. If the Salem's not filing his nails, like, what's the point? (laughs) I can understand that. I want to see more Salem. No, I like Goblin Salem too. Okay. uh, Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm clearly very conflicted on the show. I enjoy a lot of it, and a lot of it, I'm just like, what the hell Mm -hmm. are you teaching people? What do you think of uh, Ambrose? That was a character that. Love Ambrose. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't know what to make of him at the very beginning. I also like didn't really understand, you know, how he fit in for a little while until I got more information, and then you know, based on what happens towards the tail end of episode two, I'm like, dude, you're the best. He's awesome. 
I, he just continues to be awesome all season. I think he's a real scene so, stealer. Yeah. Um, um, Michelle Gomez as the, the teacher lady. Oh, yeah. She's a real scene stealer. Uh, who else really? Oh, Prudence, um, the the leader of the Weird uh, Sisters, Tati Gabrielle, yes, who is also on the One Hundred, which is a show that I love. Yeah. Um, she just commands a lot of power on screen, Absolutely. and I love watching the her. The three of them just also make for such a striking visual. Yes, like, they it's, do. <laughs> it's very like, especially in uh, episode two when it's the four of them walking out of the darkness together. I'm like, fuck yeah, this is a power moment, yeah. and I love it. But it's I, also a really dark, weird, moral moment. Yeah. Like, so let's talk about that for a okay. second. Um, you're referring to messing with mortal boys, yes, right? Yes, okay. I am. So she literally cheats on Harvey, A. I know, that crossed my mind when um, it happened. But, but duh, I guess she does. Or I don't know, maybe she's just... Like, did that ever happen? Or it's a did, good point. Or were they just projecting it into their heads? You it, might be onto in, something in there. In the end, I read yeah. it as projecting, and I, I guess I gave her like a natural mental pass as yeah. I was watching it. That's fair, and you might actually be right, but it, it is one of the first examples of something ongoing in the show where Sabrina does something to right a wrong, where I'm like, whoa, I think that was a wrong thing to do anyway. Okay. I, I don't know. The, again, no spoilers. Well, but. we already get two of those. Yeah. I mean, the principal guy was, was bad. That's rough, but too. I, I mean, it's not just like hiding a spider in the man's no, apartment. That's he, rough. Like, and they even use, I think, the word traumatized. Yes, they do. And the idea. Well, and of, she's like, we don't want to kill him, which was clearly on the table. Yeah, I. It, it seemed it seemed very <laughs> intense, and I know she was trying to do something very good and yeah. very important, but. You know, sometimes you got to weigh how you're going to get to that that better path and and the light at the end of the tunnel and traumatizing somebody else yeah. for life. That's a that's a, a tall order there. So to be fair, I do think that's an ongoing theme throughout the season. Is okay. is she going too far? How far is it right to go to mm -hmm. do the right thing? And um, I'm just not sure I understand the answer it gives at the end of the season. Okay. And it might not have, you know, there's a new season already being filmed. So yeah. they clearly have more to say. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like it is definitely a recurring theme is like what is too far. It's it's an interesting uh, situation to be in. And I think this is what makes the show so different from a lot yeah. of other material we get is like you're you're constantly teetering on, on an edge of having a character you're rooting for, but never being able to decide whether what the decision she's making to do something good is justifiable yeah. or not. I know. <laughs> and it's, it really throws me off. It's a very interesting show. It gives you a lot to talk about. I think what uh, what really was making me eager to watch more when I finished watching episode uh, two were a couple of performances in that episode where, you know, we, we got to really see, you know, just, I guess uh, I would phrase it as like someone getting to show off their acting chops. Mm -hmm. Whereas I don't, I didn't really get that feeling early on. Yeah. Specifically with uh, with Lucy Davis when she has that has like a little bit of a heart to heart with uh, with Sabrina. We have a moment like that yes. with Ambrose, and I want to see that. Those to me are the character building moments, the emotional, the the moments with more emotional value than anything. And I want more of that. And it's nice to know that this cast is capable of getting there. Oh yeah, they they're going deep in this show, and I do appreciate that. It's just a weird one, and it's hard to cobble my thoughts together on. Yeah, you got a lot of weirdness ahead ja of you too. Jarring and weird. Yeah. I think those are those yeah. are two two and words that are very applicable to the until show. It's not. Yeah. Okay. It's like stunning until they do the weird blurry thing. Or, yeah, I don't get know. that. I will say, as a lady who likes to wear a lot of red, Sabrina's outfits are really killing it for me. And it always pops in those <laughs> yes. frames. It dev that definitely looks really good. I was like, all right. I mean, I rocked that same kind of red coat through most of like high school and college. So we're on the same style page. I might take a cue from her looks. I found it really <laughs> interesting, too, that she wore that red outfit to see Harvey. And he is like, oh, it's not Halloween yet. <laughs> like, come on. Like, how do you not know something's up? Because she's in this weird, like, red frilly dress thing. <laughs> This is, this is how much I love fashion. That's how I yeah. describe it. You know exactly the dress I was talking yeah. about, right? You know, he's a very oblivious sweet boy, and that's that's his role. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, any final thoughts before we close out this portion of the show? I mean, I guess yeah, it's worth watching. It's certainly worth watching, okay. and, and it gives you a lot to talk about, clearly. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm into it so far. I think, yeah. uh, you know, two for two with clearly some, some technical issues above all else, but... 
I, I'm curious. I mean, when mm-hmm. I see a show take what I would call important risks like this and something that I don't see very many other shows out there being willing to do, yeah. that's immediately going to get your hook in me and make me want to see, you know, how else <laughs> you could surprise me later on. And I give uh, I give a lot of credit to the folks behind the show for taking the risks that they have so far. I do, too. And I like that you used the expression, get your hook in me, because I feel like that's a nice transition to our next film. Oh, well, <laughs> so you want to just jump right into Suspiria? Or do you want to talk about witchiness first? Yeah, let's talk a little about witchiness. It was just too good of a transition I know, to pass I know. up. I get it. I get it. <laughs> that's why. That's why I paused. I'm like, she's so right, but not on my schedule. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The po- the popularity of uh, witches at the moment. Well, we're we're clearly having a bit of yeah. a moment right now. Well, I mean, if you get Suspiria and Chilling Adventures on one week, that certainly Oof. makes a statement. Um, and we know that only. Uh, two theaters received Suspiria this last yep. weekend, so we will be staying rather spoiler-free and just discussing maybe themes and reviews and stuff. But, uh, you know, there's a reason why Witches of Instagram has become a very popular hashtag. Witches of Instagram? Oh, yeah, girl. Get oh, on no. It. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know I'm very familiar with cats of Instagram. Yes. I did not realize I mean, witches was a thing. And I know more women than ever who identify in <gasps> some way as witches um, or embrace elements of witchcraft into their life. Really? Oh, yeah. Can you? Uh, would you be comfortable explaining a little more about what that means? Sure. So not satanic witches <laughs> like on Sabrina, although that's a real historical thing and mm-hmm. certainly valid as a storytelling element. But, you know, like... Um, Doing spells, uh, which is different for every witch, or, you know, creating their own sigils. A lot of people I know do candle magic, are very into tarot. Um, It's also related to this, I think, growing, uh, it's always been a factor, but a growing interest in astrology. Hmm. Um, Tarot and astrology are very closely related. And, yeah, I mean... It's, I think it's casually the faith of a lot more young women than people realize. Interesting. And my, my sentiment on it is it's that because, as it always has been, witchcraft exists outside the laws of man. It gets you back in touch with the earth, back in touch with feminine spirit, with feminine power. It requires no one to give you the green light to tell you you can. All you need is some herbs and a candle, and you, you get to practice your own faith. and. Hmm. Uh, you know, what's funny is what you're describing sounds a lot like what Sabrina is fighting for at the very beginning of the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, you know, you're wrong, wrong. You are actually dead on. That's that's why Wicca is a great name for their club, because it, w- w- Wicca would craft, at least in the, the context I'm speaking of, all it is all about women empowering other women. Mm-hmm. It's just that it's tied to satanic magic in the show, which yeah, I don't yeah. appreciate. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, that's my read. I think I think that given the more that the political climate becomes a bit more hostile and we see women's rights becoming more and more of a talking point and a rather volatile one, that women are drawn to their own communities and to covens, so to speak, mm-hmm. whether that's actually a ma- magic practicing coven or just a group of women that find strength together. I could see that. I mean, I could definitely understand the idea of turning to something like some of the things that you mentioned just to find a little bit of comfort. I mean, really, isn't that, you know, it could range from someone choosing to go to a therapist, to speak to a therapist, or someone reaching out to a medium in that sense. It's just having that extra source of comfort, someone telling you, you know, that like either this is this could be a good path for you or I'm going to tell you this to give you a little comfort for something you're struggling with. Right. And just to be clear, because Wicca and paganism are like long established, very proud religions. What I'm referring to is only a certain sect of people. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, Wicca really generally calls for devotion to a god and a goddess. And uh, most of the witches I know are more eclectic witches or individual witches who don't hold to that necessarily. But I I just want to say I I know and respect that what I described was not all magical faith. I find this very fascinating. (laughs) Um, Yeah, the most most I've done recently is when I went to the Haunted Hayride. I had a tarot card reading done. (laughs) And uh, she told me I'm going to wind up working for a newspaper. And I'm like, well... 
Really? You you might be wrong on that That's one. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> That's not um, where I see you. Yeah, she also told uh, the individual that I was with that she was going to find true love soon, and uh, this woman is married. Oh, shit. <laughs> she had her hand on the table <laughs> with the ring on it, and I'm like, come on. Wow. Yeah, that's like, I got some good bad news for you, babe. <laughs> Start saving for the divorce lawyer now? I don't know. Or or just don't plan your life around tarot readings. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that might be uh, some, <laughs> some decent advice there. Uh, Suspiria? Suspiria. I, yes. I'm going to let you take the conversation first because I know you're super passionate about Suspiria. I am, and I'm so excited because I feel like uh, the last two review episodes we've done, I've kind of been the negative voice in the room. Uh, even though I really love The Haunting of Hill yeah, House yeah. and really like Halloween, I, I had more negative things to say than you or Riley did. And now I am just in love with yes, this movie. You are. I am head over heels in love with it. It is one of two A pluses I've ever given in a review. I... I had such a profound reaction to it when I saw it at Fantastic Fest. It was a secret screening there. I ran out of the theater after they turned the lights on and just went to the bathroom and cried for like 10 minutes. Like I was really, really moved by it in a way I can't even explain. I don't know. It felt like... I don't know if you've ever been to like an art gallery and this sounds so stupid and annoying, but truly <laughs> like an Italian art gallery or gone and seen the statue of David in person and you see it and it's just something majestic and artful about mm -hmm. it and you just don't know how it even exists. <laughs> That's how I felt at the end of this wow. experience. Like I had witnessed great art. I'm happy for you. Yeah, I know. I'm happy that you had had that reaction. I had a, a drastically different one, I know. one that I'm still actually working out in my own, own head. And yeah. I don't really think I'll be able to come to a, a specific consensus on how I feel about Suspiria until I see it again. But I walked out of the movie, and um, my first thought was, ooh, that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> then I drove home. And I was thinking about it. Then I laid awake in bed at night thinking about it. And I started to appreciate certain things that when you first witness them, it's hard to say, I like that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then in the end, when you start to, you know, maybe connect certain dots or really let something sink in what it's actually trying to say, I started to appreciate it more. And I think what I came down to with it is that I really, I really liked it. I thought oh, it was, cool. I thought it was fantastic. The only thing that I stand by, though, from my initial reaction is, I was very into everything happening at the school with the coven, mm -hmm. and every single time I was taken away from it, I understood what they were, what they were doing with that element of the movie. Yeah. But I was never engaged enough to be okay with being away from the dance school, and I always just wanted to go right back to it. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I never, uh, I heard a lot of people say they didn't really care for the doctor stuff. Um, and I, I understand uh, it is, you know, magic is more interesting than a grieving old man. And I, I, it took, I'm like, ugh, ugh. it <laughs> took me time to process my thoughts on it, but I did not have a negative reaction to it to begin with. I was very moved by mm -hmm. his story. The more I think about what his story means, the more I think it's a very important, essential, and just you can't get rid of that part of the film. Yeah. It's, you know, it's hard to say without spoilers, but I he know. is essential. I, I'm torn on that issue for, for that reason, is that ultimately it did have a very necessary moving payoff for me. Yes. Where even though I wasn't liking it while I was watching the movie, in the end, I mean, part of the reason why the movie was so stuck in my mind is because of the inclusion of that element of the film. I'm just talking about pure entertainment value yeah. while you're sitting there experiencing the pace of a movie in particular right. while you're watching it. It's every single time we cut to that. It's it slowed for me, and I wouldn't even say it slowed to a screeching halt because this is a two and a half hour movie, and I was shocked by how fast it, it flew moves. by. It I really think does. It's, I think it's in part due to the structuring with the chapters. I think that helps a lot. Yeah, make you it It'll breaks up the timing. Definitely agree with that, and it lets you know how much longer you have to go, which I think really helps when you're in the middle of a long ass movie. Yeah, no, I would I would definitely agree with that. Um, speaking of the old man, I mean, the news yeah. is out there. Everybody sure. knows it. How do you feel about uh, Tilda Swinton being in that role? It's really interesting to me. I don't, 
I think I would have known had I not known simply by mm -hmm. virtue of her voice sounding very much like her voice. Okay. Um, but her performance is fantastic, and uh, I didn't find it all that distracting. I just kind of accepted mm -hmm. it and went with it, and I thought it was a really touching performance, and she was quite good. I In interviews, Luca has said he wanted her to play the three roles that are meant to represent the id, the ego, and the superego in Freudian psychology. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you can decide which role is which, and we shouldn't spoil her what the yeah, yeah. third role is. But um, this is a much more Freudian movie than I knew. Like, uh, having read interviews afterwards, a lot of it is based on psychoanalysis and, like, the uncanny, the idea of the mm -hmm. uncanny. The other, I mean, the part of the movie that really touches me and that I find most interesting is that it's essentially a story of revolution, of generational change, yeah. of power struggle and conflict. and Which is why you need both sides. That's right. I, I get and I get it. Like I get it and I understand what one side brought out of the other to make yeah. the other that I like so much so powerful. It's just I wish that the screen time devoted to including that yeah. had a little more to it for me. I can get that. I mean, I can't make any complaints cuz I think it's like a near yeah. perfect movie yeah, and yeah. I, like I said art. Um but I do find it really powerful as a story of revolution, um, as a story about power struggle and as a story about like there really being no good guys in the world kind of and that it's, you know, you have these witches that's set in 1977 Berlin and they live right next to the Berlin Wall. Mm. All of this is very thematically tied into their own internal power struggle within the coven. But they don't care about the Berlin Wall or the wa world outside. They live right next to it and they have the power to do anything and they do nothing. You know, this yeah. isn't a movie about that, but it is. <laughs> it's, it's a very fascinating. As a student of history, I love all of it. And for these reasons, that's why I, I'm curious to see how I react to a second viewing, especially after having so much time to process my first, because yeah. this also feels like a movie that you're going to discover many new things for with sure. every single watch, every single detail, every single uh, character quirk. And especially when you finish watching the movie and you realize what everybody's motivation was and what everybody's path was heading towards. Because yeah. I do think there are a lot of surprises in this movie. And I think those surprises that when you go back and you rewatch the entire experience with that new, you know, I, I don't know what the phrase is, like the colored lens or whatever, mm -hmm. I think that's going to change the experience drastically. Agreed completely. So yeah. I, I'm curious. I, I can't wait to watch it a million times. I love it. <laughs> and I, I mean... I don't want to exit this conversation without talking about dance in the film and performance oh, yeah. and uh, all the technical elements that had to come together. The the challenge of shooting their dance scenes and then the challenge of editing those dance scenes to communicate the magic that it needs mm -hmm. to is really spectacular, stunning work. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to spoil the moment. There is one... Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's it, just like this this holy shit moment, this this display of of wickedly evil, disturbing, painful power. Yeah. And like, I'll tell you, with all the horror movies that I've seen, I have never seen a scene executed quite like this ever Is in this my life. Early film or late film? Early film. Okay. I, I think it's the it, I think it's probably the first show of, of extreme violence in the film. Okay, so it's the, Like, violence and, and essentially torture. It's the CinemaCon footage? Like, didn't they oh, already I don't know. play that? I, I have absolutely so. no clue what they showed at CinemaCon. Oh, really? It was no. like super... What was it? It was the woman thrown against the walls and breaking in the dance studio. Yes. Yes. That was it. So that was how they introduced the movie what to everyone. The fuck? Yeah. That's why everyone freaked out. They were like, I'm at CinemaCon and I'm going to vomit my lunch up. Um... I fully understand that <laughs> yeah. reaction. I get. I was not on the verge of being sick, but but it's intense. It like I, I don't really flinch at anything anymore on the big screen unless it involves the cute puppy or kitten. But <laughs> this this was very very difficult to look yes. at. Very very malicious. It's it, I mean, it wasn't even just the visuals. It it was like that malicious undertone too. That 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 evil mm -hmm. that was just like permeating. Off, uh, it was. Very, very hard for me to watch. It's like a film with presence. I don't like it covers you in its presence. Mm -hmm. And I, it makes you feel a lot of really 
dark, strange things that I, uncanny, don't have quite the right words for. Yeah. Uncanny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The visuals and the dream sequences <laughs> are very, um, just I'll, I'll spend years probably analyzing what those mean. Yeah. There's a lot of extreme visuals, but I was also uh, very impressed by how some of the, you know, like non, non-powerhouse moment visuals played too where you're just like you'll have like a single shot on I don't know just one character in the dance school and just like the look on someone's face when they're not saying anything and they're just lurking in the halls or even when they're just standing in a corner observing something else the movie just basically puts you on edge where where there's this overall sinister feeling and you don't know who to trust and you don't know what someone's thinking or where someone's allegiances lie and that that was extremely powerful especially when it came to the dance instructors too because yeah. not everybody there has an abundance of speaking lines or even will have you you know walking out of the movie remembering their name there's something like 40 women that are in the coven that are presented on and screen there, there's a significant amount of them where their their faces are just burned in my brain yeah. for for I'm, i guess blocking reasons <laughs> yeah. blocking and blocking framing and reasons framing, yeah. It's it's a really powerful technical movie. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of stunning technical work in that film, and the camera work certainly goes up there with the dance editing and cinematography. Yeah, I, mean. I think uh, one of the the most nightmarish characters that I walked away from this movie, especially burned in my mind, was Miss Tanner, played by Angela Winkler. Yeah, I remember. She, I, her. I'm not going to describe who she is because. I can only do that in a spoilery way, but yeah. there is something there is something about just her costume design, the way she carries herself, and the way she moves too. Like huh. she doesn't just walk. She she's a character who lurks, and it freaked me out. And every okay. single time they cut to her, I felt the need to do whatever I could to understand what she was doing because she felt like one of the biggest threats in the movie to me. I can get that. Yeah, I okay. totally remember her face. I just googled her. She's it's interesting. She does feel like a, a like a secondary character, but she doesn't talk very much. Yeah, yeah. It, it's ah, it's a good film. And yeah, there's a lot to to parse through. I can't wait. Hopefully, it'll get some awards tension, and the script will go online. You really think? I well, think the, I, I do think that it'll it'll get enough to get the script yeah. out there. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if come award season, one of the scripts that came in the mail was that one. That's and what I'm hoping. I wouldn't mind reading that. I would desperately like to read that. And the, the screenwriter, David Kajganik, or Kajganik, I always say it <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm not saying it. I don't know. He's a lovely man, and he co-wrote The Terror this year, which you know I was obsessed yeah, yeah. with. And, um, he's very smart. I mean, I want to read his script because just listening to him talk about his mm-hmm. script, I'm like, God damn, you're yeah. smart. Oh, this movie. It's so good. I feel like I just, like, I feel the weight of it on me now, just yeah. even describing some of the scenes. Oh, I can't wait to just have it at home when I can watch it as much as I want. I assume you liked uh, Dakota Johnson's performance? Love. Yeah. I'm a big Dakota Johnson She's great. fan. And, um, She's making some uh, some very bold choices. Yeah, I love it. I she, I mean, she got famous by making a bold choice. Like, being in Fifty Shades is not that's something true. that's like a casual, wimpy thing to do. And yeah. she's, I think I may have said before, she's actually great in those movies. It's just that the movies themselves are very bad. Yeah, I think I said that when I first reviewed the first movie yeah. in that franchise. It's like, I understand this isn't a great movie, but it's it's watchable largely because of her. Yeah. Which is exactly what that book called for. <laughs> it is. I think she's fantastic. And I the... I think a lot of people will underestimate her performance in this film because it's strange and subtle and unusual and not flashy. Uh, But just the physical work she had to do alone is momentous. I know. I mean, really stunning. Really. I mean, anybody participating in any of those dance scenes. And the one one of the ones who stuck out to me most, too, is uh, Mia Goth, who, you know, she's got like a unique presence in anything I've ever seen her in where I, I, I just like. I've never really taken to any of her characters quite like I did in this movie, where as she progresses through the story, there there's certain like she definitely made a certain connection where I I found myself feeling what she was feeling to I a think, disturbing extent. I think I agree that this is probably her most sympathetic and relatable oh, performance. Without, I think it's that without a doubt. Yeah. Unless there's things on her resume that I have not seen that I've seen have a that fair bit of her yeah. work, and she's usually used for her ethereal looks, you know, to play something strange or or. Yeah. She was in this really great film called The Survivalist, but even there, she doesn't get to do like you super know what's sympathetic. Funny is, 
I think I saw that. I like I that did. movie. I you, saw, you didn't like it. I really I did. I didn't like it. I saw yeah. it at Tribeca like years a couple ago. a couple of years. Wow, yeah. I haven't thought about that movie in forever. <laughs> I uh, know because when the uh, when it finally did arrive on video, I was like, oh, do we already have a review for this? And I saw your review and I was like, yeah. oh no, I'm I'm writing my own review. I, I don't I agree with that, that at all. I believe that was a movie that made me especially miserable and in a bad you, way. You did not it, like it. Yeah. yeah it's I, a very dark film. I remember being very, very yeah. unhappy walking <laughs> out of that screening. But I mean, one way or the other I I do applaud her because I think yeah. she really really nails an important role in this movie. She does. Uh, I Yeah, again, no spoilers. She's great <laughs> and she has to do a lot. Ah, uh, it's difficult to talk about this without spoilers. It is. But it's we diff- got it. I feel it's like in two every, theaters. Every single time we review something it's like, "Oh, let's do non-spoilers, but we should do spoilers later." Hey, we did for Hill House. I know, it can I happen. know. And and Halloween and maybe we'll yeah. do it for Sabrina and who knows, maybe we'll bring this up again on a future episode too. I would love to do spoilers it for might... Suspiria cuz I have got shit to say, my I lady. I mean, it might be worth it at a point too because, you know, as you were saying earlier, this movie hit two theaters, yeah. I believe one in New York and one in LA, and it posted the best per theater average of the weekend. Yes. I, mean, I don't necessarily know if that's going to translate into a big performance. I don't think so. And it's only, what, it's going to like 400 theaters or something Yeah, I have, I have the numbers here. But you guys, if you do want us to do a spoiler review after you see the film, let us know in the comments so we can gauge the interest on something like that. Yeah, Box Office Mojo right now says the film will expand into about 250 theaters oh, next less weekend. Than I, thought. I don't know. Uh, I, does a cinema score only work on wide releases? I'm not sure, but I hope. It gets one. I can't oh. wait to see it. All right. Make a prediction, though. What do you think it would wind up being? <laughs> D. Yeah. Yeah, I go I go towards that. and <laughs> I'm conflicted, though. I've been debating this because I think actually Amazon did a really good job of marketing exactly what the film is. They didn't mislead audiences. The trailers look weird and disturbing. Yeah. So it might, the audiences might not feel as betrayed as they did by like Mother or something like that. Okay, that might keep it from getting the F. Yeah. I I just have this, so take my reaction for example. Sure. I walk out of the movie, if someone there hands me a cinema score survey, I write down one thing because it's like Opening opening day, right when you walk out, you fill out that survey. Yeah. A couple hours later, I might want that survey back, right. and I might want to change my answers. It's a tough one. I mean, there's a reason we got out of the screening at Fantastic Fest, and when I'm there for any major movie, I try to write up the review within an hour, 90 minutes. Yeah. And this and I was like, hey, guys, that's going to have to be tomorrow because I need some I think know. time. It's, it's such a frustrating thing that I, I guess because it's it's award season now and yeah. you know, also because obviously my review of Bohemian Rhapsody was – drastically different from a lot of other reactions but I've just had on my mind a lot lately the idea of I don't know like like what should it be should it even be one thing that you should write it ASAP right after you walk out should you sleep on it until the next morning I mean sometimes our work schedules and embargoes dictate the answers to that but you know I'm, I'm fascinated by this idea of giving especially because we're so reliant on grades yeah giving a movie a score and then watching that score or at least in your mind, maybe not on paper, maybe not in video, but wa- watching your own personal score in your heart change, change over time. And that happens. It's just, I think it's just a reality of the business. And I think that any it's the critic, reality of being a human being. Yeah, it, totally true. And I think any critic who tried to say that their their initial reviews were always 100% right would just be kind of a dummy with a yeah. stick up their butt because I mean, that's just not realistic. I've proven it to myself with something like The Invitation. I've said it before. Oh, oh that's interesting. I, I love that movie. I, but, but that was the thing. It's like I walked out not loving it, not having the nicest things to say right. about it, and then it became one of my favorite rewatches of recent years. It's just... I de- definitely Suspiria is a, t- a film that you guys are want to give yourself some time to process when you see it. If you haven't seen it yet, because it's yeah. not, it doesn't go down easy. And I think you are definitely not the first person I've talked to who said their opinion evolved on it when okay. the more they thought about it. Yeah, I mean, really, whenever I do post my review, I, th- I think I wound up with a four out of five on it. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, like I'm, I'm fast. I'm, I became more fascinated. Yeah, like I, le- I left, f- like feeling very put off. 
and then that constant like uh, cycle of of obsession <laughs> like just made me fascinated by the whole thing. If that if that evolution makes any sense, I think it totally does, and I do think it's a film that sort of conjures and provokes obsession and and revisiting it over and over and over in your mind. Yeah. It's it's really powerful, and I think it's I I stand by my review, which called it a masterpiece and an instant classic. I think it's really truly going to stand the test of time. I'm so curious to see what the <laughs> what like the wide reaction yeah. is. So, Amazon is releasing it in limited theaters, and then it'll go up on Prime. Is uh, that that's the plan? what they usually do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Essentially. Or not essentially. That's totes the wrong word. Eventually, I use the wrong words all the time. I even make words up, so you're fine. <laughs> Eventually, it will definitely be on Prime because yeah. Amazon obviously releases all of, of their films on Prime. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. I can't. I think that will be such a good thing for the film because so many people, you know, going to movies is expensive. Yeah, it is. It's hard to get a babysitter. This may not be the movie that they prioritize. It's also difficult to go to a two and a half hour movie. Absolutely. Like, especially if you need something like yeah. a babysitter, but you might be open to it if you could watch it in the comfort of your own home. Right, put the kid to bed and pop it on the TV at home. <laughs> um, I always think about my Definitely friend and make her sure kids that kid this time is, here. Make sure that kid is asleep before you, you know, start this <laughs> yeah. one, though. That's true. That's true. I realized something funny Wait, that was that br- not... That also brought me... Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. That also brought me really quickly back to another thing I found interesting slash weird about Sabrina is within two, episode, two, two episodes, there must have been, like, ten instances of a character finding out something because they're creeping around a corner. <laughs> I, I just co- I couldn't snoops. believe it. They're, I didn't they're notice all. that. I'll have to there's, watch there's that. There's a couple of them. Yeah. I think there's one moment where it happens like three times over. Well, you know what? Don't trust Satanists, I guess. No, sorry, Satanists. I hear you're actually really, really lovely people. <laughs> uh, what did I interrupt you when you oh, were going to say? Oh, this is funny um, and not at all intentional. I wanted to wear this lipstick because I had orange in my shirt. It's uh-huh. an orangey lipstick, but this is actually exactly the lipstick that she's is in the love witch is so i'm wearing really? witchy love uh, huh. witchy lipstick for a witchy episode it's very appropriate yeah i know it's a total coincidence we should probably start winding down soon yes. but because this is the last episode everybody is getting before halloween i was wondering if you had watched anything recently or anything that we haven't discussed so oh. far this month that you might want to share with the viewership oh, cool no heads up on that question i know huh? i know i it, well i was just i don't know i was thinking about it and it's like we've covered so many things yeah. but I don't know. It's just like I walk. I walk around every single day with like this immense weight on my shoulders because I just don't have enough time to watch everything. Totally. I mean, two things come to mind. So, one of them is I did just revisit the Friday the Thirteenth remake, which I totally stand even more firmly by my opinion I like now. That movie a lot. It's really good, <laughs> and in an age where it's really hard to get like a straight up slasher film, like yeah. that's not meta, not self referential, just does the old school slasher formula. Nobody recently has really done that better. I, I think it's really good, and I don't yeah. know why people hate it so much. I I was even more impressed revisiting it. I'm right there with you. Anytime that movie is on, I will watch it and not turn it off. I hadn't seen it in quite a while, and I, I absolutely stand by my opinions. That's also one of those movies, like, you know when you're, like, uh, when you're channel surfing, and you always turn on a movie, and you always turn it on at the same exact spot? Whenever yeah. I turn that one on, and it's not the very beginning, I get sad, because yeah. that cold open is brutal. It's fantastic, and I think that is why a lot of people don't like the movie, because it doesn't live up to its first 20 minutes, which is fair, but the yeah. rest is still pretty good. Um, the other thing is Channel Zero, which I know you yeah. you like very much as well. I do, I do. I have not gotten the chance to yeah. watch, what's ma- which makes me very, very sad. I, I actually to... did watch the first half of episode <laughs> yeah. one, so I can give you my thoughts up until that, and it's <laughs> it's good. I want to know what the heck is going on. I, uh, you know, I reviewed it for the site, so I tried to, not tried, I, I did squeeze yeah. in all six episodes first. and Impressive. I like it. I like it. I wasn't so sure in the first couple episodes that this was going to be on par with the last few seasons. And then it really won me over the further it went in. I'm very happy for E.L. Cats. There's a, yeah, he, he did a really good job. There's a um, a character this season called Pretzel Jack that is one of the more disturbing things to come out of this year. I'm vaguely aware of Pretzel Jack because okay. Pretzel Jack does come up pretty early in episode one. Yes. So I'm aware. Uh, okay. What a phenomenal creation to everyone involved including uh evan katz uh, nick antosca 
and the performer who I believe is goes by Twisty Troy. Oh, boy. They just have just <laughs> created something that is really unique, and especially in an age where killer clowns are sort of popular mm-hmm. again. They did something different and really creepy. Well, maybe I'll binge between now and next week or one of our future episodes and we'll circle back because you guys know I'm I'm always here to beat the Channel Zero drum as much as I possibly can because I think that series deserves to be in front of more eyes. So before we uh, sign off, what's your last minute Halloween recommendation? Okay, so it's actually not... It's not really horror per se, but if you're a fan of gore and especially well orchestrated gore, I did just get the chance to watch The Night Comes for Us. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. How do you pronounce Timo's last name before I butcher it? Well, I don't know. It All right. J- Timo, J- who, worked, who worked J- on J- The Raid. Yes. Um, uh, he's, he's great. I, I was just. So, you know, you know, extreme martial arts violence, that's not really my kind of thing. And, oh, yeah, we just and, talked about yeah, that. And oftentimes when we go to these horror film festivals or there's a midnight lineup at a film festival, they'll normally populate that lineup with at least one or two films that fall in that category. And, and usually I'm just not that into it. It's not my thing, whatever. The Raid movies are great. I like oh, yeah. I, I watch those movies and it's just like how they orchestrate those fight sequences is mind blowing and I actually think I was even more impressed by the action in the night comes for us. Whoa. I just <laughs> It's like with all the preparation I had from the raid, you think that I would go into it knowing what's going to happen. But every single thing that happened in that movie, I'm like, no, they didn't just no, they didn't. They did that. Certainly more violent than the raid. Oh, my God. And just the the ingenuity and the creativity with like all with stuff everywhere and how (laughs) you could use it to kill someone. So I'll say this: there is a uh, early in the film, there's a fight scene that takes place in a butchery. And I was like, I think I can think of all the things you could use in a butchery to fuck someone up. No, nope. no, you can't. No, nope. no, they you came can. up with way more. That scene. I mean, really, there's so many <laughs> yeah. insane action sequences in that movie. But I think my favorite one in the entire thing is when the three ladies. Oh, my oh, favorite too. Oh yeah. boy, it's really fantastic. There is there is one moment in that sequence that I. Because I, I was watching it here in the office, and I think I like stood up and was like, "What just happened? <laughs> what just happened?" It's really the fight scenes are incredible. I don't think I would agree that they're better than the raid, which it's like really, really intense thing to say. I, but um, they are more creative, maybe. I th- and, and I think that's why I was yeah. drawn to this more so than I'm usually drawn to that right. kind of filmmaking. They're very violent, <sighs> very bloody. I like this movie a lot. I think it's about a half hour too long. And um, that's just a personal thing. I don't. I don't think an action film needs to be like two and a half hours. Uh, but I'm trying to think of what where I would like shave some time off. But it's like I don't want to lose anything. Oh, I I could shave a lot. But I I uh, I can't say anything but great things about the fight scenes. Man, they're so good, and the, it does have a lot of return players from the raid, especially yeah. the raid two. Um, Iko Uwes, who's mm-hmm. of course the face he's, of the raid. Oh, he's incredible. He's in it, but he's not even the most phenomenal fighter no. in the film. Like no. he doesn't even fight as much as the other people. He it's is. sort of crazy. Well, my MVP, I don't know the actor's name, is Bobby. I think that's everybody's. I really, I really liked Bobby. Who doesn't like Bobby? I don't know. He's a big, giant, beautiful and it's beast like he, man. Even that actor, too, gets to exhibit more range than one might think when you first meet him. And I was just—I was very impressed by that. Yeah, he was um, He was in the raid, too. He was one of the actors, as was, um, oh, gosh, why can't I remember her name? One of the female oh, fighters. Oh, I know who you're Julia talking Stout. about. Yeah. Fanta- she played Hammer Girl yeah, in the yeah. raid, too. There's a lot of uh, carryover talent that's really, really impressive. I'm really excited for this little this circle that they're building right now. It's, yeah. a, it's a team of really talented filmmakers. Like uh, Talented doesn't even... Just saying that they're talented filmmakers doesn't even feel like <laughs> I'm ju- doing them justice because the abilities that they exhibit in these movies is... I, really, it's mind-blowing. It is. And uh, Timo, I think for me, this is my favorite film of Timo's. Um, they're... They haven't really hit this caliber for me before, although I've enjoyed yeah. them. Uh, but if you like his stuff and if you like The Raid, you should definitely watch his segment in VHS 2 that he did with Gareth Evans, which is called Safe Haven. So when you were saying whether it was the favorite or not, yeah. like if I can do the when they're directing together, that se- the reaction I had to that segment yeah. 
like I I can't think of very many instances where I walked out of a, a especially a short form story like that and I was just, I was floored by it. I couldn't believe what I had just witnessed. And still (laughs) to this day, that is my favorite uh, anthology segment I've ever seen. Very high bar. Yeah. That's impressive. I mean, the only other thing that complicates that statement a little bit is how I feel about Trick or Treat. But I'll also say that I don't think Trick or Treat is the same type of anthology as a VHS movie. I think that Trick or or Treat is much more well woven together than many people give it credit for. So Interweave? What what did I say? I said the bad word. That's not a... What did you say? I said interweaved. Isn't it interwoven? I don't don't know. know. All right. I think I think that's our cue. I think that's our cue that that our our minds are fading away and bleeding into Halloween yes. time because Yay. it's almost the holiday. Can't I'm so excited. Wait. Haley, where can everybody find you, especially if we're we're sharing stuff from our John Carpenter adventures? Yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. So you won't find much of that on Collider, but you will find probably a good deal of it on my Instagram at Haystack McGroovy and possibly on my Twitter at Haley Fouch. And you can probably find some photos and videos from that night on my Twitter and Instagram as well at P. Nemiroff. As always, thank you guys for joining us. We wish you a very, very happy, safe Halloween. Yes. Enjoy the holiday. Live it up. Watch some good horror movies. You have officially survived the witching hour.